I should talk about what you want to find in a skid plate. So, oh man, it's bright out there today. Welcome back. We took off yesterday of filming, but we did work our butts off on this skid plate. So I wanted to show you what we've done. Check this out. This is the world's coolest skid plate. Uh, we were just going to do something very simple, and then you know how these builds go. We end up uh, we saying, <laughs> we're That's like, well, it. as long as we're doing this much, we might as well do a little extra. And then we end up with a six foot long skid plate. So back here, it's completely covering everything, and it looks really cool. We've got all these designs, these um, angles to it, and then up front, it continues all the way up past the oil pan got more angles here it's got big giant bolts three on this side four on the other side you can see up top i've welded it all together it links in on the back here links in in the middle and then it's got angle underneath the oil pan and it's got these tubes on either side this one is angled up and over the drive shaft because the drive shaft is going to come up into here and we have a cross member tube here i think you saw us working on that so today we have to take it off and cut a hole right here we need to do a little bit of clearancing for the transfer case so we've got a little bump out that we're going to put underneath there and what else did i want to show you guys where you got drunk oh yeah i had to replace the lens on my helmet because i kept on getting offline there on my welds but i told uh, josh to make a, a turtle shell and that's what he came up with there that's going to work right underneath there to have a little bump out looks pretty good from the side and let me show you the other side oh yeah so we have some more angles there and Josh, I don't know about you, but I think when we take it off, we should maybe cut about an inch off of this lip here, because it's got a little sticking out. From the side it does. It doesn't actually stick out though. It's back behind the frame, but it, well, whatever you wanna do. It's because this is rolled. Like yeah. This is rolled and this is sticking straight out. So I'm thinking that there would be dirt up in there. So if we take right. that saw and just cut maybe three quarters of an inch off. Yeah. Um, but either way, that skid plate is looking real nice. Here's that other curved piece right in there. It's going to be iffy if <laughs> the starter's going to come out or not. So we'll see whenever we have to replace the starter. And then yesterday Josh drilled these holes here for the front body mounts. I feel like there was something else we did. It seems like we did a lot of work. It's all skid plate. It took a long time to work on that skid plate. That was a lot of work, even though it doesn't seem like it would take that long. But that is one ginormous, beefy skid plate. So we're going to pull that down, and I'm going to flip it over on a welding table, hopefully, and then weld up. I haven't welded anything on the bottom side. It just occurred to me I should talk about what you want to find in a skid plate. So. One of the things we started with was bolting it up. So I thought, well, we'll just put bolts here because it's going to be easy. But that's not what you want in a skid plate. You want it to be perfectly smooth. So what we did is we came up at a 45 here and put the bolts on the frame rail. That way, whenever we're sliding over the rocks, it's going to slide perfectly smooth, not catch on anything. Another thing that we ended up doing right here on the back so you can see this is at an angle. At first we just had this flat surface here, which would have been okay, but if you come over something and you slide off of it and then the rock ends up here, and then you have to back up, that rock would just wedge right there on that 90 degree. So what we did was we made these slopes, these ramps. So if we have to back up, then this rock is just gonna push. Your, your nose is whistling. <laughs> My nose is whistling? <laughs> Are you okay? I guess I, I, I didn't I wasn't aware of it. <laughs> uh, everybody at home is like what's that train <laughs> <laughs> okay um oh one of the things we also had to figure out was the drive shaft so the drive shaft has to come through here on the rear pretty self-explanatory but on the front it's a little bit different so on the front the drive shaft has to come right through here and so you can't really have much of a skid plate on this side, but you can push that skid plate over 
to the passenger side. So we did that a little bit, and then this thing has to come all the way up and protect the oil pan. Now that's hard to do unless you make a monstrosity of a skid plate, which is what we did. But then you don't want it to bend, so we put this angle iron into it to keep it from flexing. But then when you do that, when you come all the way up here, you have to mount it to something. And so we put these tubes in here. We mounted it sturdy to those tubes. But you have to watch out for the drive shaft here because this is going to come up when it flexes. And you want to make sure that you've got enough clearance right there. What else do you want in a skid plate, Joshua? You want strength. You want it not to bend. Yeah, so the reason, the way that you add strength to a skid plate on the other Jeeps that I've done, I've added thickness. On this one, we've got a lot of these 90 degree or like 45 degree bends. So it's kind of like a roof truss. Whenever it hits on a rock, it's gonna push out to the edges. And if it was just flat, it would be able to bend. But since it's got all these angles to it, it's gonna fight that. Also, you don't want it to touch anything. Of course, that's mobile so this tube right here needs clearance because that tube is on a bushing so it's going to have a little bit of movement to it so you need to keep that in mind and then you want it to be as close to the frame as possible you don't want it sticking down so that's why instead of just going down another half inch or inch we made it as close as possible and then any area that we need to clearance for we're just going to clearance just a little bit more and that's what this is going to be for right under just the part that needs it instead of the entire skid plate. Since there is a large run right here without any bracing, so there's basically no bracing from here all the way up to the front of the oil pan, uh, what we thought we could do also is add thickness right here where these angle iron pieces are. We can set a piece of quarter inch on top of that from one to the other and make that like an inch and an eighth thick and then that will also keep it sturdy. We could put one more piece of angle iron down the middle too if we wanted to. On this side, on the passenger side, it's probably two and a half feet of skid plate that has no support to it. So we need to make sure that part is structurally sound. <clears throat> you made a video on how to do that with the scorpion, right? Doing the skid plate? Yeah. I think so. It's been a, it's been a few years. That, I built that in 2016, that's eight years ago. Doesn't seem that long ago. I also took the time the other day while I was welding to weld up that front bumper. Looks pretty good. Winch is gonna sit right there. And it's looking nice. All right, let's pull this thing. Okay, I made my best guess for where it's gonna be balanced. Whenever we get it actually balanced, we need to put a... Put a mark on it. We need to weld a circle, actually. Yeah and be like, that's the balance point. Uh, why is it still stuck? I bet you it's tacked somewhere. Put that back up and then I'll smack it with a hammer. So this accidentally got welded to it somehow right there. We'll just take a a wheel and cut from this side but that is not supposed to be there that was that was supposed to stay up there i think we'll be able to lift it oh it's not too bad so i'll finish Welding this top side and then we'll flip it over and weld the other side. That's a pretty neat skid plate, I have to say. It looks like a, from Star Wars, some sort of fire jet. Yeah. Pew, 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 pew. It's not flat, but we knew that. We built this part flat and then we jacked this part up to, uh, to get as close as possible to that oil pan. All right, we cut a little plate that we're gonna weld in right in here to beef up that skinny section. And while I'm doing that, Josh, what are you gonna do? Get drag out of there. Get drag? Get drag out of there. <laughs> so that's the get rag uh, transfer case or transmission actually. So he's gonna remove transfer case because we have to go through that. And then transmission, we're gonna go through that. So all that's getting pulled out. 
And I think we've got some twin stick coming, huh? We've got it. We've got, got it. Got some twin stick action coming two on this sticks. bad boy. Two sticks of fury. So instead of just one stick to go into four wheel drive, we're going to have twin sticks. One will be front axle, one will be rear axle. We'll be able to control them independently. And then you'll have a third stick. Okay, I'm going to have all kinds of sticks. I won't know what to do with all those sticks. I'm not sure what to do with my hands. All right, let me know if you need this camera, Joshua. If you're gonna drop something on your head, make sure to let me know to come film, or, or I'll just hand you the camera and you can film yourself. I'm gonna have to skip around on this, let it cool in between here and there, trying to keep it from warping. So if you heat the whole thing up or if you heat too much in one area, it's just gonna warp it. It's amazing how your welds can look so much better on a table rather than underneath a car or upside down in a tight cramped area. So you can see right here, my welds on the table are looking a lot better. Also, I think a lot of people don't understand the importance or the significance of having a good skid plate. A lot of people um, kind of put that off and don't actually think about it or don't even put one on. It's kind of a last minute thought for them, but I think it's very important. Wouldn't you say, Josh? Yeah, otherwise you get a rock wiped up in between uh, your cross members and you can't move. I wasn't going to say anything. But a skid plate, especially a flat belly skid plate, is, is an important part of rock crawling in that the bottom of your vehicle is what's hitting on the rocks the most, right? So if you can keep that momentum going by not allowing things to get up in there and get caught, uh, if you've got brackets and if you've got bars and tubes and things, especially that are perpendicular to the movement of your travel, those are gonna get caught on rocks, and not only does the skid plate protect your transmission, your transfer case, your oil pan, it helps you slide over the obstacles. So it's very, very important, and something I think every rock crawler should have as flat a belly skid as possible. Okay, I've got it welded up enough. I think I can knock this out. I'm trying to figure out where it's actually welded to this thing. Crazy. It's that tiny tack right there was doing all that. You ever have that happen to you with a grinding disc? <laughs> I was grinding, just smoothing all the this out, and it caught right in there and just whew, glad I had this on. That hurt. See this part? Yeah, what you got? Separation separation we have separation and anxiety why is it that it's going to balance oh <laughs> Why did you decide to build such a heavy rig? That's what we do. So we heavy rigs. That bushing is not happy. You got that thing supported? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. Until this gives way. Until that gives. Alright, back to this. That jarred it so much that it can't get it off. I don't have a tool. I usually just take these off by hand. I don't think I like those cheap grinding discs. Come on, Robo Grips. You guys remember these Craftsman Robo Grips from back in the day? I've got a set of these. These are awesome. I don't think they make anything like it anymore. 
but it self adjusts depending on how thick something is. <coughs> thought about using the vise, but sitting right here, you guys are probably screaming at me, use the vise, use the vise. Well, you guys were right. Here I was being a dummy. Finally. What do you got for us today? I got chicken salad sandwiches and french fries and okra. Oh, are you guys hungry? <laughs> Time to go eat. Puppies want to eat too. All right, oh. Honey. You got french fries? Yeah. Do I need to wash my hands? <laughs> that would be a good idea. You've been getting all dirty? Where's my sandwich? You don't get one. What? I like Josh more. <laughs> Wait, what is that? It's, I, I cooked the cheese. Is that a cheese it It's, it's a, you know, it's cooked. That's a big giant cheese it <laughs> Look at that. All right, Hi. there's a big cheese it in there. So we have to, we have to rate this sandwich. No, don't do that. It's falling apart, babe. I know. Pretty good. I just want to try that cheese it by itself. There's more upstairs if you want it. How'd you get so messy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is pretty good. Mm -hmm, is. Got fried okra, french fry. All right, I'm done welding this side, but before we flip it over and weld the other side, I want to cut out for that transfer case. So. This thing is going to go right about there. We'll trace it. I'm going to cut it out a little bit smaller. And then we'll weld this on from the other side. Alright, we'll cut that maybe half inch smaller than that. So this is going to get welded right like there, make a nice little ramp once I weld that and you'll be able to slide for the most part flat and if you hit this it should push over. Now I think though we were talking about it, I think I want to put a drain hole in this because if you were to lose fluid from your transmission or your transfer case it would probably puddle up in here and you'd never even know it uh, until it's too late. So I'm going to put a drain hole here so that the fluid will come out and you'll be able to tell that you're leaking. I think that'll be sufficient. forgetting this stuff. So this is anti-spatter spray. You put that on here around where you're going to weld and it'll keep the spatter from sticking. It'll make just clean up a little bit easier. Now on all these other welds, I'm going to turn down the heat a little bit because these are already welded really well on the inside. So basically I just need to pretty them up on the outside and just put a pretty looking weld. It doesn't need to be a good structural weld. But I'm going to do that on all these outer sections here. Alright. 
right, I've got it welded up. There's two more things that I want to do, however. One is cut a hole for the oil plug drain. So I'm going to cut that there. We'll be able to drain the oil. It's straight through on this one instead of like a Cherokee where it's kind of out back. This one is just straight up and down. So that's good. And then I want to cut about an inch off of these edges here so you don't really see those from the outside of the vehicle. Using our 911 Motorsport little templates here to make a circle cut. What you want to do is cut in the center work your way out to the edge and then go around in a circle. I think I'm finished with this skid plate, so I smooth, smooth that out a little bit, and I cut off a little bit of the lip on either side. It's completely finished welded. Took off all of the little slag that got stuck on there, and she's nice and smooth. I haven't thought of a name yet, though. I usually call my skid plates and my big drills and my big pry bars. I give them a name, like. Big Bertha, Big Susie. I'll let you guys name this one. What do you think we should call that? Maybe something in the Mad Max realm or uh, Knights of the Holy Grail, Monty Python, whatever you guys think. Let me know in the comments below and I'll choose one of them and that'll be the name of our skid plate.